Hi everyone! As I mentioned in my May TBR video recently, one of my reading projects right now is trying to work my way through the novels that are on this year's Hugo Awards shortlist. I'll probably be reading most of these on ebook from the library, which I really recommend if you're looking for a very convenient way to get a lot of books without paying a lot of money. Today I'm going to be talking about Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. I actually have ordered a copy of this book and it's going to arrive next week, but I wanted to go ahead and talk about it while I was still a little more fresh in my memory. Um, but it looks like the hardcover which I ordered has some really cool features and it looks like a beautiful book, so I will show that to you guys at some point after it comes. So out of all the books on the list, this was the one that I was probably the least excited about reading, and you might understand why if you know me and you look at the cover. So to me, when I looked at this cover and I heard the description, which was lesbian necromancers in space, the combination of the word necromancers and that cover said to me that this book was probably going to have some sort of horror elements. And horror is a genre that I really, really do not like. I'm probably a little bit more of a sensitive reader. And I especially don't like anything that has to do with body horror. So I was kind of expecting to be either grossed out or scared by this book. And to be perfectly honest, there are some dark things in this book and there are some creepy things that happen to bodies. I mean, there is necromancy involved, but I really, really loved this book anyway. And it had a really great sense of humor and something about it just clicked with me in a way that meant that the elements that I was worried about really didn't bother me at all. So I do think that this is a book that might still bother a more sensitive reader, but for me, it really, really worked. And obviously I loved it enough that I went ahead and ordered a copy. Also, I know that there are some people that might hear the description and look at that cover and be like, this looks amazing, this looks badass and so cool. And if that's your reaction, I guarantee you're probably going to love this book. Even for me that kind of had the opposite reaction, I also loved this book. This is probably one of the books that I've been the most excited about this year so far, and the fact that I wasn't even expecting to like it, it was just planning to get through it for this reading challenge just makes that even better for me. I did think that this book was incredibly funny. I was laughing to myself from pretty much the first page, and I was even reading it slower than usual just to really enjoy the tone and the feeling of the writing because I knew it was going to be a very sort of satisfying and fun reading experience. I ended up showing some of it to my husband just to give him a feeling for the tone and what the writing style was like and I told him to read a couple of paragraphs that I pointed out and he actually he was laughing out loud and he wanted to keep reading even though it was in the middle of the book and I had to forcibly take the iPad back from him so I could keep reading but he is reading the book right now and he's really enjoying it so far. This book exists somewhere in a continuum from science fiction to space opera to science fantasy. It's so unique that I don't know exactly where I would even classify it. The setup is like this. There's an immortal emperor who rules over eight aristocratic houses. Each one of these houses practices its own flavor or variety of necromancy, and each one has a long tradition. Don't get confused. There are eight houses, and this book is called Gideon the Ninth, and the main character is from the ninth house, but technically the emperor is the first house, so in the book the houses are numbered two through nine. That might be a little bit confusing. The ninth house out of all the houses is the most isolated and traditional. They wear creepy black robes and do skull face paint and all of the things that you might sort of expect a creepy necromancer to do. Gideon, the main character, has been raised there since she was a baby. She's basically an indentured servant and she wants to get out. This is something I think that anyone who has been raised in a small town or a small community might identify with. In her case, she has a lot of other good reasons why she wants to run away and join the army and never look back. In some ways, Gideon is a typical action hero with a heart of gold. She has a tough exterior, she's obsessed with her longsword, she notices pretty much all the cute girls that she meets, but she has sort of a good heart and is willing to sacrifice for the people she actually cares about. The other important character is Harrow, or Harrowhark, who is the heir to the ninth house. She is pretty much the opposite of Gideon in every way, and she and Gideon have a sort of frenemies, or maybe just enemies, relationship where they've been raised alongside each other and basically fight constantly. As the setup for this story, they both want nothing more than to get away from each other and never see each other again, but they also need each other to accomplish their goals. At the beginning of the story, the emperor summons the heir to each house, along with their cavalier, which is sort of like their bodyguard, to come to a deserted location for reasons that I don't want to talk about in this video. 
But what that means is that this book has a pretty big cast of characters that is stuck in one location for a large part of the story. Because it's a big cast of characters, it kind of does take a while to figure out who everyone is and get to know them, but Muir does a good job gradually introducing characters as Gideon gets to know them, so it's not too much of a problem. There is a cast of characters listed at the beginning of the book. Honestly, I didn't consult it more than a couple of times because it seemed like Gideon figured out who people were around the time when we needed to know that. One thing I really wasn't expecting from this book, because I didn't read anything about it beforehand, and even once I started reading it, was that it turned out to basically be a mystery and it was very much in the style of And Then They Were None by Agatha Christie. I don't want to say any more about that because it could also potentially be kind of a spoiler, but if you are familiar with that book then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Like I mentioned before, I don't know whether to call the genre of this book science fiction or science fantasy or just fantasy. There really isn't a lot of science involved. There are sort of mentions of theorems and formulas and things like that, but the necromancy basically works like magic from the reader's perspective. I'm going to go ahead and talk about a couple different aspects of this book. First of all, character. In terms of character, the book is pretty tightly focused from Gideon's perspective, and she can be kind of obtuse in the way that she looks at things, but she's also a really hilarious narrator. You really get a good sense of her personality and it is really enjoyable to read things from her perspective. I also thought the other characters were really well fleshed out and entertaining and distinct. So character was one of the elements that I really enjoyed in this book. Even though Gideon doesn't necessarily look very far beyond the surface in the people that she meets, you still get a pretty good idea of who they are, both from her perspective and from reading between the lines. The relationships in this book are also really good. There are a lot of complicated different kind of relationships among all the different cast of characters, and although romance isn't really a strong part of this book, from Gideon's perspective, it is there a little bit. The most important relationship in this book is really the relationship between Gideon and Harrow, which is really complicated and evolves throughout the book, but is really enjoyable to read because the author really does capture this depth of history that they have together. For Gideon, Harrow is kind of this combination of her boss, her master, her friend, her enemy, and which one of those is prevalent really changes depending on where in the book that you are, but it makes for a really complicated relationship and a lot of back and forth banter and arguing and entertainment as they have to figure out how to work together. In terms of plot and pacing, which I'm kind of going to lump together, I really enjoyed the plot. Pretty much everything that happened in this book surprised me because I read very little about it beforehand and I didn't find anything that happened to be predictable. The pacing was good too. I was pretty engaged the whole time. There was maybe a section in the middle where I felt like they spent a little bit longer just figuring things out without too much really happening but otherwise I thought all of that was really strong. In terms of prose, I really loved the writing style of this book. It is very unique. It might not be for everyone, but I thought it was hilarious. There was a lot of snark and sass and banter between the characters in a way that is really entertaining to read. There was also this really interesting element to the writing style where it could switch between really highbrow and really lowbrow in the course of one sentence or one paragraph in a way that is kind of crazy, but also really entertaining to read. You kind of got the sense that some characters were taking themselves super seriously while others were in on the absurdity of it all. Overall, I would say the writing style is really nuts, but it was nuts in a way that totally clicked with my brain and sense of humor, and it seems like a lot of other people have really enjoyed this book as well. So the last thing I want to talk about with this book is world building. This is something I hear people talk more about honestly with fantasy than science fiction, but it seems like it should be equally applicable to both, and it definitely applies to this book. At first, I felt like this book was a little bit narrow in its setting, like the setup was more for humorous effect or, you know, for story reasons rather than really making sense on its own. Things about the ninth house and what Gideon was describing while entertaining just didn't really feel very deep or fleshed out, and I just didn't think that was going to be a strong element in the book. Actually, without any spoilers, I want to say that it it turns out that that was really just because that was what Gideon's perspective was and she was taking certain things for granted and there were other things that we just weren't aware of as a reader and so some of the things that I thought were failures of world building actually kind of turned out to be important plot points. 
The ninth house, where the story starts out, is amusing, but it feels kind of one note and not very fleshed out, and it's only when the characters leave and go somewhere else that you start to realize there really is a lot more complexity to the universe out there. And you meet characters that are from other places, and you realize there's a lot more going on, and Gideon just really hasn't been exposed to very much in her life. I also think that the way this book ended did a really good job setting us up for a even more complex and detailed world that we're going to see in book two of the trilogy. I'm really looking forward to reading the sequel to this book, which I think is coming out in just a few months. I think a lot of people would enjoy this book because I wasn't expecting to like it. It didn't seem like something that I would typically be drawn to, and I absolutely loved it. So unless you're somebody that is so turned off by the idea of things that are like even a little bit dark or have any skeleton I think this book is worth a try. I'm really, really excited to keep following this author and to read more in this series. It really delighted me in a way that a book hadn't for a while. So if you've been hesitating to pick this book up because you weren't sure if it was going to be for you, I would really encourage you to give it a try. If you have read it, let me know down in the comments what you thought or if you agree with what I've said in this review. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more content from me.